This has been such a big story for the Rangeley area, but for the state, it's the third, you know, biggest hill in, in Maine and it's beloved by skiers in the Northeast. What we tried to do in the piece was uh, give, you know, a little bit of the tumultuous backstory of this mountain and this resort for folks who maybe haven't been as paying as close attention to it as you and I. And uh, the outfit that has been integral to reopening the mountain is uh, what's called an impact fund. You know, it's sort of this very interesting like in combination of, uh, of, of an investment firm with sort of a social mission. And so we tried to look a little bit at that, what that means. We also had the opportunity to get one of our favorite ski photographers, Jamie Walter, out there during the first snow of the season and just capture a little bit of like why this place is so special to people. In a very different vein, Jed Coffin takes a look at what's been happening in Bath with, and this is a story that people are probably familiar with, but the, the repeated attacks on human beings by rabid foxes. And this happens, you know, it's not, Bath isn't the only place that's ever experienced this, but the sort of Bath and Brunswick area has had, um, you know, a, a localized epidemic of rabies, particularly in the fox population, but also raccoons and sort of small mammals. And uh, Jed, the author, he, you know, he actually uh, mentions in the story, he fought off a rabid raccoon in the backyard that was coming at his family not long ago. So th these stories, they popped up in the news a fair amount the last couple of years. And occasionally they make the national sort of news of the wacky where, you know, there's a woman in my town here in Hope who drowned a raccoon with her bare hands and became sort of a viral sensation. We read these things, they're kind of droll seeming, they're kind of amusing. I think people from away go, oh, there they are in Maine you know, killing small fur bearers with their bare hands again. And it is strange, but it's also very serious. And the, the article sheds a lot of light on, um, on the disease itself, told me some things about rabies I didn't know, um, and looked a little bit at the you know, very serious community strife over what, if anything, can be, can be done about it. It's winter time. This is the time of year when we turn to those hearty comfort foods. You've got a nice spread, four different dishes. What was the angle that you took here? No, the angle is it's the middle of winter and we're hungry. <laughs> we want extra calories. And what we did was uh, we, what we set out to talk to what we think of as like the four pillars of Maine's kind of traditional food pathways. So we solicited some recipes uh, from a fisherman, from a forager, from a farmer and from a hunter. Interesting people that talk a little bit about the backstory of why this recipe is special to them. Got a great photographer, Derek Bissonnette, to shoot these things and they, they look mouthwatering. I've tried a couple, I'm going to try a couple more. One of Maine's great assets is the diversity of its architecture. We got a lot of old homes here, more than you'd find in many other places. You go to Florida, it doesn't look like Maine, right. but it turns out there's one architectural type that people really don't like, and you've got a nice little piece on it. Allegedly, they don't like. This was a survey performed by a website called homes.com that happened to come across our radar, and it revealed that Italianate architecture is the most hated style of architecture in Maine. Now, Maine is not alone in this, evidently. Italianate architecture performed poorly nationwide, or at least in a handful of other states. But uh, we had Hannah Holmes, a uh, contributor to our magazine and our sister magazine, Maine Homes, write a little bit tongue-in-cheekily about what's to love about the architecture. That, after all, is what we see in the beautiful Victoria Mansion, what we see in Stephen King's very odd and creepy uh, former home, sort of current home in Bangor. Um, and a couple other landmarks around the state. If you have ever looked at a place and gone, you know, maybe this, maybe this will be the piece that changes your mind.